Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and in this video, I'll teach you how to make a Discord bot inside the Discord library called PyCord. So PyCord is a fork of Discord.py, is easy to use, and it is an API wrapper for Discord. So for this tutorial, um, you just need to know the basics of Python and nothing more and I'll teach you the rest of this Python library. So let's get started. The um, first thing that you need to do is open up like an IDE, any text editor, and the ability to run Python. So in this tutorial, I'll be using Replit because Replit is free to use, and there's a way to make it run forever, I guess, using a website called Uptime Robot. If you're using Replit, one of the first things that you need to do is install PyCord. So the way you do that is you go to Py, project.toml and then you just do pycord equals um, the version and I'm using 2.0 beta 5 so if you want to use Replit I'll link it in the description and you can watch like a tutorial on how to use it it's very easy to use and once you've installed pycord if you run the project it should install it for you but it already installed that's what poetry does it automatically installs so now, let's get started. So we're going to import Discord and import OS. So the reason why we're importing Discord is to get the library, right? Um, PyCord and Discord, right? And then OS, right? Because uh, in Replit, all the code is public. So we need to get, um, if we were to have a bot key, right? I have the token right here. I'm going to make sure that um, I reset it at the end of this video. So the bot token is going to connect to your Discord bot. So the way that you get this, right, to run your Discord bot is you go to the Discord developer portal and then um, you go to new application, you click new application, I already have an application. You name it what you want and you put a description, you go to bot and then you get the bot username that you want and then you get the token over here and also to invite the bot you go to OAuth URL generator bot you click this bot and you also click applications.commands because this will let you do slash commands and that's very useful so I already invited the bot to my discord server so I won't need to invite it again so now that we have the bot key and the um, the bot invited we can now create the bot. So bot equals discord bot. So this is the bot class inside discord or bot file. I'm not sure which one. I'll have to check documentation. And then uh, once you do that, um, we have to run the bot. So bot.run. And then um, once you have your token, you just put your token in a an environment variable or if you're not using Replit you just put it in a string but um, if you're using Replit I definitely recommend using environment variables because your code is public so anyone can see your token and that means anyone can run your bot so you have to put it in an environment variable so that only you can see it. So environment variables are only seen by you. So now we can put our token here, and then we're going to run it by token. And then to know if our bot is online, we're going to at bot.events. Um, and then we do define on ready print I am online. So now if we run this, it should print in the console once we've run this. Oh, it must be coroutine. So what that means is we need every function to have async. And that means um, that we can run multiple functions at once. And if we run this, it should print I am online and the bot will be online. So now that our bot is online, we can make the slash command. So at bot.slash command. And there are a few important things for this. So first, we need to get the server IDs. 
and this is going to be a list. And the way that you get this is you right click on your server and click copy ID. And the reason that we do this is so that the command will register faster. And then we do server IDs equals server IDs. Or wait, no, sorry, not server IDs, it's guild IDs equals server IDs. So these are the parameters for slash commands. So the name, the description, and guild IDs are the most important. So name equals, I don't know, test. Description equals amazing command. And then if whatever you set to the name here has to be the same as um, the function, the same name as the function that you use. So I have name as test, so async test, test, ctx, and then we're going to do ctx.respond. The command works. So anything that you see in the strings here, you can change, except this test, or this name, has to be the same as the name of the function that you use under this um, class decorator. So if you're wondering what these at symbols are, they're class decorators. I'll leave a link in the description to a tutorial on how this works so you can understand the API better. So, um, I'm not sure, oh, server IDs, so this, oops, this needs to be IDs. So now this should work, if I do slash test, yeah, so it might take a while to, oh, this needs to be awaited, yep, and if we run this, the command works, and test, it works, so that's pretty much the whole tutorial. Um, so in the description, I'll put the API link and um, the developer portal link. In the comments, tell me if I missed anything or if you have any uh, need for help. And I'll try my best to help you. So, so yeah, that's the end of the tutorial.